Hello guys, in this last tutorial video, I'm going to show you the basics of the plot command. We will keep working on Apple's circuit 5 system. Let's start with the plot circuit command. This command is responsible for plotting the buses of the circuit which have a bus coordinate associated to them. The bus's coordinates are specified in the bus chords underscore ckt5 dss file. Before using the plot command, the system has to be solved at least once. In plot menu, one can see that there are several plot options, like the already mentioned circuit plot, monitors in the case where executing a time series simulation, load shapes, and TCC curves for protection elements. At the bottom of the list, we can access the plot options. For example, we can set which variable is represented in the line thickness. Let's leave power here. In this field, we have to set the maximum scale for the line thickness. For example, 2000 means that the maximum scale corresponds to a power equal to 2000 kilowatts. There are some other options. By checking dots, there will be a dot on each bus of the plot. By checking labels, there will be labels with the name of each bus of the plot. By checking show loops, if your system has any loops, it will be shown in red. This command is useful to detect unintentional loops in your system. And by check show substations, if there is a substation declared in your system, it will be marked on the plot. Before plotting the circuit, let's activate the record command in order to understand how the plot command is built. This is quite useful when several plots are needed. Now, all we have to do is to select circuit plots in plot menu. As you can see, this is the circuit. The line thickness represents the power passing through the respective line and the maximum scale is 2000 kilowatts. You can zoom in the plot for a better visualization. And by right clicking on a line, you have some options to visualize some of its electrical quantities. We left the option subs checked. That's why we have the substation marked on the circuit plot. However, OpenDSS only knows which transformer represents a substation because the parameter sub has been set to yes for the transformer mdv underscore sub underscore one, as you can see. As we left the record command activated, the plot command that corresponds to the options we have selected has automatically been recorded at the bottom of our script. As you can see, we have performed a plot command in which the line thickness represents power with a maximum scale of 2000 kilowatts. The options, dots and labels have been set to no and the subs option has been set to yes. C1 is the color used for the lines. The default color is blue. The color may also be specified either by its RGB color number, as this case, or standard color names, for example, blue. In the OpenDSS manual, there is a list with all standard color names. Let's play around with some of the plot command parameters. For example, by setting the maximum scale of line thickness to 5000 kW, it can be noted that the line thickness of most lines reduce. We can also set specific styles for single phase and three phase lines by using the parameters 1pH line styles and 3pH line style. For example, let's set 1pH line style to 3, which means a dotted line. Running the plot command again, we now see the new style for single phase lines only. You can check these and some other parameters in the help menu. Now, let's set the variable represented in the line thickness, for example, current. As you can see, the thickness has changed according to the current flowing in each line. And let's try with losses. As you can see, all lines seem pretty thin. This is because we are still considering a maximum scale of 2000 kilowatts. In other words, the losses in all lines are so small compared to the maximum scale that we cannot even see any difference between the losses in each line. If we change the maximum scale to 10, for example, we can better visualize the difference in losses for each line that looks similar to the plot we got when we chose current as the variable being represented by the thickness of the lines. A useful feature of the plot command in OpenSS is that we can mark specific elements and buses. For example, if you want to mark the capacitors in the system, all you need to do is to add the command set mark capacitor to yes, and to choose a cap marker code, there is a symbol you want to mark each capacitor with. 
The list with all symbols can be found in the OpenSS manual. The size of the marker can be chosen through the parameters cap marker size. So, in this circuit, there are four capacitors. If you want to erase the markers, just set mark capacitors to no. There are several options of markers, including PV systems, regulators, and transformers. For more information, check the manual. If you want to mark a specific bus, you can use the command add bus marker, followed by the name of the bus. Let's use a predefined bus here. The code, that is the same code used for the capacitor marker, ranging from 0 to 47, color, and size. Remember that you have to run this command before the plot command. So, this is the location of bus 39582, as you can see, applying a zoom. If you want to erase all bus markers, you can simply use the command clear bus markers. Now, assume, for example, a generator connected to the same bus with an injected power of 2000 kilowatts. Solving the circuit, it is difficult to see the impact of the generator with the power flow represented by the thickness of the lines. Again, this is due to the fact that the maximum scale is not adequate for that. We have to adjust it according to the power generator. For example, let's set it to 1000 kilowatts. Now we can see that a great amount of this power is flowing upstream. Another plot option is the daisy plot. A daisy plot is a circuit plot with yellow circles with a steam plotted around in selected buses. By default, the circles represent generator's locations, as you can see. However, you may also create an arbitrary list of bus names that represents whatever you wish. The list of bus names can be set using the parameter bus list. Check the manual and the technical notes using the daisy plot for more information. Now, let's explore the circuit plot showing voltages. This plot is multicolor and depicts three levels of voltage defined by the parameters norm vmin pu and emerge vmin pu. Just as an example, let's set norm vmin pu equal to 1.01 .01 and emerge vmin pu to 0.99. Now we can find three colors, C1, C2, and C3. I will choose the colors green, blue, and red. As you can see, there are three voltage levels depicted in this plot. If the voltage in an area of the circuit plot is higher than norm vmin pu, the circuit will be plotted according to color C1, that is green in this case. If the voltage is between norm vmin pu and emerge vmin pu, the circuit is plotted according to color C2, blue. And finally, if the voltage is below emerge vmin pu, the circuit is plotted according to color C3, red. So, these two parameters define three voltage levels. Next plot we are going to explore is the profile. The profile is a plot that doesn't require bus coordinates. It's a graph containing the evolution of the voltage of the system versus the relative distance to the location of an energy meter element. The distance zero is commonly considered as either the substation or the location of the circuit element. In every circuit 5 system, an energy meter has already been placed next to the substation. Then, all we need to do is to select the option Profile in the plot menu. As you can see, it contains three profiles. Each of these profiles represents a phase of the system. The black one represents the nodal voltage of phase 1, the red represents the nodal voltage of phase 2, and the blue line represents the nodal voltage of phase 3. The full profiles represent three phase lines and the dashed lines represent single phase lines. Let's take, for example, this line here. Like in the circuit plot, we can right click on this plot and get some results for this line. So the name of this line is this. It is connected to buses 52517 and 94729 and its per unit voltage are 1.005.998 and 1.016. If you want to plot a profile and include the three phase lines only, all you need to do is to change the parameter phases to default. And finally, you can also plot the profile considering the line to line voltages rather than the line to neutral voltages. In this case, the parameter phase must be set to LL3PH. 
Let me put the line to neutral profile and the line to line profile side by side so you can see the difference. When the profile is plotted considering line to line voltages, the black line represents the voltages across phases 1 and 2, whereas the red line represents the voltage across phases 2 and 3, and the blue line the voltage across phases 3 and 1. At this point, you should have noticed that there are two horizontal red lines, one at 1.05 PU and the other at 1.01 PU. These two voltage levels are the norm Vmax PU, that is the maximum permissible per unit voltage, and the norm Vmin PU, the minimum permissible per unit voltage, respectively. By default, these parameters are 1.05 PU and 0.95 PU, but I have set norm Vmin PU to 1.01 PU a few moments ago to show you the three voltage levels defined by norm Vmin PU and emerge Vmin PU in the circuit plot when the lines represent voltages.